Hey everybody, Ape Honcho here. Today we'll be taking a look into the world of outlaw motorcycle clubs or outlaw MCs and how although yes, a culture that started in America in the 1900s travelled all the way to the United Kingdom and have since had chapters open here to become established outlaw motorcycle clubs. After motorcycle clubs started in the early 1900s, outlaw MCs, not to be confused with the outlaw motorcycle club, would start to emerge in the decades to come. Now when we talk about an outlaw outlaw MC, you might be scratching your head asking yourself what the difference is, and well by definition an outlaw MC from the club's perspective is because the club isn't sanctioned by the American Motorcyclist Association, not necessarily because they engage in criminal activity, but of course it has been well documented that outlaw MCs have been linked to the criminal underworld, and even here in the UK it's said that some outlaw motorcycle clubs are even linked with the likes of the IRA and Mexican drug cartels. The US Department of Justice even goes on to define outlaw motorcycle clubs as organisations whose members use their motorcycle clubs as conduits for criminal enterprises. Another key phrase you may hear in terms of outlaw MCs would also be one percenters. One percenters is said to refer to a comment made by the American Motorcyclist Association that 99% of motorcyclists were law-abiding citizens, implying that the last 1% and therefore weren't law abiding citizens were outlaws. This quote supposedly was a response to the Hollister riot of 1947. In 1947, an event had been held in Hollister, and to sum up what happened, some bikers at the event caused trouble, they raced bikes in the street, they got drunk, some people were injured, a lot of people went on to be arrested. And supposedly, in response to this, the association would come out to say that these troublemakers didn't make up 99% of bikers and therefore were one percenters. But a lot of people took this and felt like they fit into that category, and so they made clubs away from the association and therefore became outlaws. On a quick side note though, the American Motorcyclist Association had came out to say that they performed in-depth investigations and determined that the comment couldn't be backed up by any of their records. So how do outlaw MCs work and how do people become a member of one. While some outlaw clubs employ a process where members must pass several stages such as friend of the club, hang around and prospect on the way to becoming a fully patched member. Of course this can vary from club to club though. Within the process of becoming a fully patched member these lower ranked members would have to perform various tasks which again does vary from club to club, sometimes even having to act out on violence in order to move up the ranks. And that's where today's story takes us as we follow the story of several prospective members of Outlaw MCs and their journey to potentially becoming fully patched members. In 2018, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club wanted to set up a new chapter in Surrey, but seeing as their rivals, the Vikings Motorcycle Club, had already established themselves there, it seemed as if this task was going to prove harder than what was set out. The only documented incident between the Hells Angels and the Vikings was actually around six months before this story takes place in May of 2018. Here, two Hells Angels bikers attacked a Vikings rival in Maidstone. They knocked him off his bike in broad daylight within the town centre, pinned him up to a wall which was followed by repeated punches and kicks. It seems the main goal was an attempt to rip his jacket off and then rip his patches off which in the outlaw world is a total sign of disrespect. But again, six months on from this attack, on the 1st of November 2018, Hells Angels prospective members, along with associate prospective members from the Red Devils Motorcycle Club, came up with a plan to try and persuade a Vikings associate motorcycle club by the name of the Wargs Brotherhood to join alliances with them to give the Hells Angels a stronger hold in the region and therefore set up a new chapter. Ex-Vikings member Jimmy Kidd had switched sides to the Hells Angels six years prior in 2012 and was still on good terms with the Wargs, so he decided to take it upon himself to set up a meeting at Cobham Services. After this meeting though, it was clear that the Wargs wouldn't break ties with them and so the Hells Angels and the Red Devils would soon turn to a more aggressive plan for one, to show their loyalty to their clubs, but for two, to try and wipe out a threat so the Hells Angels could once again set up a new chapter in Surrey. Six days after that meeting, the last minute plan was to be executed and on the 7th of November 2018, seven prospective members of the Hells Angels and the Red Devils, that being Jimmy Kidd, Bartosz Plesniak, Tamas Tomekzek, Poitos Jimidzewski, Ladzilav Zlej, Prezemlos Korkos, and David Jacobs, along with six other unknown members, 
attended the Hells Angels Club in Slough before driving to South Godston Station. A little after 7pm, they left in four cars and headed for the sleepy village of Blindley Heath and parked up in St John's Meadow, which is just north of the Foreman Club and Institute. This was thought to have been a shared clubhouse between the Vikings and the Wargs Brotherhood. Next, the bikers leave their vehicles together and would be captured on CCTV that hasn't been released to the public, but the CCTV does pick the bikers up walking towards the social club. Around the same time, a meeting was going down at the clubhouse known as the Should between the Viking and Wargs members, and it's believed that around seven were in attendance. 14 month old member and in fact youngest member of the Vikings MC, 21 year old Reese Hobbs had left briefly to fetch a jacket from a car outside, but this action would make him the first target of the Hells Angels and the Red Devils. When leaving the clubhouse his attention had been drawn to the road by the sound of someone kicking a stone and as he looked down the road he saw 5 or 6 men. The men had been dressed in all black and either had balaclavas or face coverings and every one of them was holding a weapon. Again, these were Hells Angels and Red Devils members. As he looked at the men, one of them charged towards him and at first he thought he'd been knocked over but soon realised he'd been stabbed. He fell to the floor and the bikers would go on to beat him around the head and arms. Somehow though, he manages to get up and staggers towards the clubhouse, but was quickly pursued, and as he got to the door, he was stabbed in the groin and collapsed through the door, and it was then Reese went into the corner of the room and his intestines were in fact hanging out. Once the bikers burst into the clubhouse, they unleashed an attack with knives, coshes, batons and industrial cable, going on to stab five more of the men and beating them in an attack which lasted, believe it or not, less than 90 seconds. But even though this lasted less than 90 seconds, witnesses who were near to the scene would phone emergency services and described it as a, quote, massacre. The result of the attack, though, once rushed to hospital, showed that all men had been seriously injured. Most were stabbed in the arms, buttocks and calf, and they'd also suffered torn muscles and broken bones. For Reese Hobbs, he required a total of 25 staples to close up his wounds, whilst another member, David Clark, needed 25 stitches in his head, and he had also been stabbed in the thigh as well. Eventually, though, all seven men would go on to be arrested in connection with this incident and were charged with GBH with intent, violent disorder and possession of an offensive weapon, and all seven would go on to deny the charges brought against them. The only court details we really get from this situation is, of course, the events which we've already gone over, but also all men gave different defences. For example, one of them said that they'd been in the area, but they'd been drinking with a friend whilst others completely denied being there. But although they had gave these defences, AMPR, phone data, CCTV and DNA evidence, along with again, not great defences, to be honest with you, would see all seven men go on to be found guilty on all charges brought against them, but Jimmy Kidd was cleared of possession of a bladed article and possession of an offensive weapon. In October of 2019, all men would go on to be sentenced to 14 years in prison. And so today, we've took a look into the world of outlaw motorcycle clubs. If you guys want me to continue with this series, give the video a thumbs up so it lets me know that you guys want to see more of these kind of videos. Of course, if this is something that you want to see, we will continue to look at situations that have happened here in the UK, but also if you guys want to see me cover maybe stuff that happens in America and stuff that happens in Australia, Europe, etc, because of course they have big biker cultures over there also, especially in America because that's where it was birthed, then again, let me know in the comment section if that is something that you guys want to see. But yeah, it's been your boy Ape Hancho, and I'm out.